everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video, I'll show you how I use Google Photos to electronically keep kids' art, memorabilia, and old photos. This is part of a series on organizing and accessing photos digitally. Those of us with small children or crafty older ones can quickly find ourselves overwhelmed with the products of our kids' talents. Paintings, drawings, crafts, 3D sculptures, pinch pots, etc. So maybe you have an extra annex to house all of that stuff in, but I do not. I quickly determined I needed some policies for purging and saving. Thankfully, my kids' egos seem to be able to cope with watching me immediately recycle some of their treasures, but some are particularly dear to them or nice enough that it seems reasonable to keep them in some way. So just like with non-artsy paper, there are really three options. Pitch, keep physically, or keep digitally. First, pitch. So I will say that I'm a little merciless in this area. Anything that looks like it took less than an hour to create, pitch. Anything that is an iteration of a single theme, I only even consider keeping the best of. And anything where the whole class did the same project, mostly created by the teacher, and very little extra kid creativity went into it, here's a perfect example of that, that gets pitched. The, ex the exception is my kids are looking over my shoulder as I'm going through this process. Sometimes I just have to wait until they're not around. Keep physically. So this is obviously totally subjective. For me, I tend to keep things that really show creativity. I keep diaries, notebooks of essays, and journals. I try to keep a little bit from different parts of their lives so that they can see growth and change when they go back and look through it. But I really limit storage to one under the bed container per kid and one cardboard magazine holder in my office as a temporary spot before I take it upstairs to put it in their respective containers. Keep digitally. With this kind of limited physical storage pace, you can see why I might have issues parting with things. My solution is taking photos. If it doesn't make the cut to keep physically, but it's not super easy for me to pitch, I take a photo and keep it with all of my other photos. After all, I think of photos as a way to remember people and events, so why not use it for objects as well? So I use this for a wide range of things, like even like the baby blanket that was lovingly made for my son but no longer works with his room decor, or the giant bunny that was made for my daughter but that makes her sneeze. So taking pictures work great for artworks and projects that are contemporary. Then the date stamp is actually accurate. But often we are going through old stuff and making decisions about whether to pitch or to keep them about older things. So for those older objects, I change the date stamp on the image file using Picasa or Google Photos so that it accurately reflects the date it was created. I might also put a caption that indicates what child created it and potentially under what circumstances. So you can watch my videos on using Picasa and Google Photos for more information about how I organize photos and change date stamps. Sometimes you'll find yourself with old school printed photos, right? Some people just aren't on the digital train yet or you just can't get them any other way, like school photos or team photos or wedding pictures. So I like to turn those snapshots into digital photos as well. But as anyone knows who's ever tried to do this, the problem is that you get glare and it just looks like a poor quality snapshot of a snapshot. So then I discovered a great app owned by Google called Photoscan. You can download this for free from the App Store. So this app has you snap pictures from four different angles in order to remove glare from photos. So here's a quick demo. So here's the photo taken normally and then the photo taken with PhotoScan. Good, right? Again, change the date stamp on the photo to properly reflect the photo's time frame, and then store this with your photos chronologically. 
So I have my photos randomly scrolling in digital photo frames and screen savers in my house. I've got a video coming soon about this. If I've stored memorabilia and old printed photos digitally and artworks, then I figure that I'm seeing them and appreciating them way more than I would if they were just stuck in a bin in my basement. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.